This video is all about similar triangles. I will be showing you how to find missing sides and other missing values given two similar triangles. But first, you can create similar triangles by using a scale factor because similar triangles are triangles that are the same shape, but they might be different sizes. So uh, let's dilate triangle ABC from the origin by a scale factor of three over two. If you want to dilate from the origin, uh, given the scale factor, which tells you how big the triangle is going to be, uh, if the scale factor is bigger than one like this is, we're going to get a bigger triangle. If the scale factor is smaller than one, we're going to get a smaller triangle. All you have to do is multiply each of the values by the scale factor. So let's find the coordinates of each point. For example, point A, uh, has the coordinates negative 2 comma 2 and point B is uh, 4 comma 3 and point C is 2 comma 0 so 2 comma 0 and all we are doing is we're going to multiply all of these numbers by 3 over 2. So we're going to multiply everything by 3 over 2. And that will give us A prime. So, um, the, and that will give us B prime. And that will give us C prime. Okay, uh, so if I want to multiply negative 2 times 3 over 2, I'm just going to do a little scratch work down here. If I do negative 2 times 3 over 2. Well, this, this is like negative 2 over 1. So that's going to make negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. So I'm going to get negative 3. All right, so obviously if I multiply 3 over 2 times 2, I will get positive 3. All right, I see another 2 right here, so I know I'm going to get a positive 3 right there. Okay, um, what if I multiply 4 by 3 over 2? So if I take 4 and I multiply times 3 over 2, all right, that's like 4 over 1. So that's going to be 12 over 2, uh, which is 6. So I'm going to get a 6 right there. All right, what about three? If I take three and I multiply by three over two, interesting, we're gonna get a little bit of a decimal here. This is three over one, so that's gonna give me nine over two, and that's 4.5. So I'm gonna have six comma 4.5. It's okay that that's a decimal. And obviously if I multiply three over two times zero, that's just going to give me zero. So you just multiply everything by the scale factor, and that's how you dilate from the origin. So now let's plot these points. A prime is negative three comma three. So this will be A prime right here. B prime is six comma 4.5. Okay, so six, 4.5 is going to be right here. So that's your B prime. And then C prime is three comma zero. So here is C prime. So let's just connect all of those points. So as you can see, uh, when you dilate by a scale factor, you're going to get a similar triangle. All right, so let's slide over to problem number two. Identify the scale factor of this dilation. Give your answers as reduced fractions. So uh, for this 
we just need to figure out the uh, the coordinates of one pair of points. It doesn't matter which uh, point we look at, um, A, B, or C. So um, I'm just going to pick point C. So the way I know which one is the original point, the original point is the one that is a plain letter with no uh, apostrophe, which is red prime. So this point C is the original point, and that is, uh, let's see, that's 6, 2. So point C has the coordinates 6, 2. And it became this new point, C prime. All right, and C prime is 3, 1. All right, 3, 1. So the question is, what is the scale factor? What did we have to multiply by that will turn 6 into 3? Well, this one's pretty obvious uh, because the way you turn 6 into 3 is uh, you take half. Half of 6 is 3. So the scale factor must be 1 half. All right, but it's very important that uh, you look at it in the form uh, you have the old point first, and then it becomes the new point. And again, the way you know which one is new is the new one will have the prime. Sometimes it's not so obvious uh, what the scale factor is. So um, remember this little formula, write this down. If ever it is not totally obvious, like it was here, oh, half of 6 is 3, that's pretty obvious. But the scale factor will always be new over old. Okay, so in this case, um, for example, if I look at the x values, uh, new over old would be 3 over 6. And if, obviously that reduces down to 1 half. If we use the y values, we get it right away. N uh, new over old would be 1 over 2, immediately giving us 1 half. Okay, uh, problem number 3. Given that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, find all missing angle measures. No work needs to be shown. Okay, let's pay attention to which angles are corresponding. For example, uh, A is corresponding with D. So here's A and here's D. B is corresponding with E. So here's B and here's E. And of course that leaves C corresponding with F. So here's C and here's F. So look, when you have similar triangles, the corresponding angles are equal. All right, they are con the angles are congruent. Uh, the sides can be bigger or smaller. The sides are not congruent, but the angles are absolutely congruent. So um, if one yellow angle is 66, that means the other yellow angle is also 66. All right, so that's angle D. So angle D is 66 degrees. Um, if I have one blue angle that is 73, that means the other blue angle is also going to be 73 degrees. So that's angle B. So angle B is 73 degrees. But what about the green angles? Well, uh, we don't have either one of those, but that's okay because we know that the sum of the angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. So we should be able to subtract these two angles from 180.
66 and 73. So 180 minus 66. Uh, whoops. Minus 73. That's 41. So that means the green angles must be 41 degrees. So um, that's C and F. So we have 41 degrees for angle C and angle F. Okay, let's take a look at number four. Uh, let's see. These triangles are similar. Find all missing angle measures. No work needed. And we have to complete the similarity statement down here. Okay. So, um, it looks to me like uh, angle E and angle B are corresponding angles. They both look very close to 90 degrees, and so this one is 88. So it looks like that matches angle B. So this must be the other 88 degrees. Okay, so the, those are corresponding. Um, it looks like angle A is corresponding with angle D. So angle D must be the 54 degrees. All right, so that's 54 degrees. Now, obviously, these are going to be corresponding angles because they're vertical angles. So you know those are going to be congruent. Um, but what will that be? Let's subtract from 180 again. Okay, uh, 88 and 54. So that's 38. So these angles are both 38 degrees. So um, that's angle BCA and DCE. Now as far as the similarity statement, um, we start off here with angle A. Okay, and that corresponds with angle D. So I'm gonna put angle D first. Second, we have angle B, which corresponds with angle E. So I'm gonna put E second, which just leaves angle C. Okay, problem number five. These figures are similar. Fill in the blank, no work needs to be shown. All right, well, we need to figure out which sides are corresponding sides. Okay, so um, the easiest way to do that is uh, look at the first triangle. What is the biggest side? So uh, the biggest side here is 32. Now, what's the biggest side on this triangle? That is 24. That means these must be corresponding sides. What is the smallest side over here? That's 20. What's the smallest side over here? That's 15. So those must be corresponding sides. And that leaves these two to be corresponding sides. Okay, so now that we have that all matched up, um, that helps us match up which are the corresponding angles. Okay, so let's uh, mark the angles with a color too. We will uh, put the same color on each angle for the opposite side. So um, here's angle A across from the yellow. So I'm going to mark angle A as a yellow angle. Okay. Um, Angle B is across from the 20. Um, so I'm going to mark this as a blue angle. Uh, you know, I should have done this as I went along. So um, angle D is across from the blue. So that's going to be blue. Okay, angle C is across from the green. So I'm going to mark it green. Okay, angle F is across from the green. 
And let me go back and get angle E across from the yellow. I'm gonna mark it yellow. So not only do I have the corresponding sides, but if I use the trick of marking the angle across from the side, the same color, then that automatically gives me the corresponding angles as well. So now I can make the similarity statement. Um, A corresponds with E, so I will put the E first. B, B corresponds with D, so I'll put the D second. Um, so I've got E, D, and that just leaves F. Okay, now, Find the scale factor that changes ABC into the other triangle. So notice the order. They're saying we start with ABC. So that means we're calling ABC the old triangle and we're turning it into the other triangle. So the other triangle will be the new triangle. Remember that the scale factor is going to equal new over old. Okay, so just pick a pair of corresponding sides. Um, I could use any pair of corresponding sides. So I'm gonna use the, uh, I'll use the 15 and the 20. So new over old would be 15 over 20. You had to pick corresponding sides, so I picked a pair of blues, but I could use the greens or the yellows, it really doesn't matter. Um, either way, I need to reduce the fraction. So um, I can do this in my head, and hopefully you can too. Both of these are divisible by 5. So if you just divide them both by 5, you're going to get 3 over 4. Now, if somehow that's going over your head, um, the calculator will reduce fractions for you. 15 over 20. All right, but hopefully you don't need a calculator for something this simple. Okay, um, problem number six. These figures are similar. Fill in the blank. No word needs, uh, no work needs to be shown. Okay, they are similar. So uh, you can see pretty easily which sides are corresponding sides. So um, obviously these are corresponding sides right here. And you can just see how um, basically what's happening is if you take this shape and rotate it, then it becomes this shape. Okay, so that means that um, angle A, um, let me just go around with color. So angle A is corresponding with angle J, and then angle E corresponds with angle I, and angle C corresponds with angle H, and angle B corresponds with angle G. So that allows us to make the similarity statement. Um, so A corresponds with J. Uh, B, okay, B corresponds with G. Okay, C corresponds with H. D corresponds with F, and E corresponds with I. So there's your similarity statement. Now find the scale factor that changes A, B, C, D, E into the other shape. So they're saying that this is the old shape, all right, because it becomes this new shape. All right, so remember that the scale factor is new over old. Okay, so I only have one pair of corresponding sides, that, and that's gonna be 30 over 36, new 
over old. So 30 over 36. Um, these are both divisible by 6. All right, so that's going to give me 5 over 6. All right, if you had any trouble with that at all, use your calculator. 30 over 36. All right, so that is the scale factor.